Welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and today's special five part series for Red Heart, what we have going on is five different unique stitches. Now all of these exist within one particular project and it's called the Holiday Cable Throw and it's a free pattern. I'll provide the link for the more information of that. So why did I do five videos instead of one? The reality is, is that all of five of these stitches can be used independently of each other. So as we go throughout the series, you're going to be able to learn the specific stitch that you have. So today's set tutorial series, we're going to be learning the front ridge. We're going to be learning cables, arrow stitch, the woven stitch, as well as the Celtic weave. Now the Celtic weave is what caught my attention on this afghan in the beginning and from that I've been able to learn. In actual reality, I've been running the crochet crowd for six years and I'm still learning new stitches. So when we come back, we're going to start off with our We're now going to explore the Celtic weave and this is absolutely fantastic. Now, this one has a little bit of a challenge because one line is really easy to do and the other one you really got to kind of mess around with it a bit and get used to how to position the yarn in your hands. I'm not going to lie to you, this one I think of all of them is the one that will cause you the, the most, um, not grief, but the one that's going to make you frustrated the most as you get used to it. But as you can see, I was able to get this and by the time I was getting back to the top, I was like zooming this off really quick. But I will say that in the first uh, two or three rows, I was really struggling quite a bit. But you can see, this is absolutely amazing. Now this pattern is a one-sided pattern, so all of the back looping that you will see here, the back posting will be on the one side but all of the woven area here is absolutely amazing. So without further ado, let me tell you a little bit more about this and let's get started. When we're going to explore this stitch, you're going to notice that we're going to be starting to jump over stitches in order to create the weaving effect and we start off with two um, just basically double crochets on both sides that will keep it in balance and then everything will start weaving in and out naturally as we do it. It's not really natural, you just got to position your hook properly when you're going to stick it into the stitches to make it work. So we're going to start jumping all over the place. I have started off in this particular pattern, it started off with just on a single crochet to work with the post but for tutorial reasons I decided to make it double crochet so it's very easy for you be, to be able to see the stitches. So let's begin now. We're going to start off with this and basically if you were starting an afghan with this, you'd have to keep it in sets of four. So you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. When you get the size you want, you just have to add two and then this will stay in balance for you if you're doing a single crochet along the bottom. So let's uh, begin. We're going to start up and we always start up this way when there's nothing already starting. So basically the, we the, wo the weaved area and the woven area has not started. So we're going to start right from scratch. So this will help you out as well. We're going to chain up three, one, two and three and we're going to go into the first double crochet that's available. So this one is taking up with your three. So there is one side like so. You also want to make sure at this point is that we have to understand that we are going to be working on a front side or back side because um, this is not um, a two sided piece. You're going to want to make sure that you're starting off and you're doing the front side first. So this is the considered the front side so don't start it in this particular on the back side because it won't, it'll appear on the back. So let's uh, begin. We are immediately going to do um, trebles and we're going to skip over two one, two and go to the third and we're going to wrap and wrap and what we want to do is that when we go to do this is that we're going to go into the front post of the third one that we've missed. Okay, so in, in and back out and let's just finish this treble off as normal. Okay, so then we immediately go into the next one. So wrap and wrap going into the next post, okay, and pulling through and pull through two, two and two. So now we have it going on a 45 degree angle in one direction. We need to come back and do the other side. So what we have to do is that we have to stay on the front side of the project, so right on the side that is facing you. We wrap and wrap. We come to the very first one that we skipped. Okay, so you see that these two are part of that. So you have two that are empty here. We're going to come to the very first one and we're going to do the front post treble and then we're going to come in, wrap and wrap and come into the very last one. So the second one that's over and do it. So essentially now you can see that they've just crisscrossed over each other just like so. We're immediately going to start the next crisscross. So we're going to wrap and wrap and we're going to look. 
we're gonna skip two empties, go to the third and come in the front side. It's a front post treble and just finish it off as normal. Wrap and wrap, we come into the next one because there's always gonna be two side by side to make this work. Okay, let's go back and start picking up the ones that we missed. We wrap and wrap, let's go to the farthest one away from this area. So the first one. So this is the easiest one of the two rows that you have to do for this. So wrap and wrap and come into the next one that's available to you. And you can see that those just crisscrossed. Let's begin another one, so wrap and wrap, okay, and immediately just skip over, okay. But this time what we have to be careful of is that we have to make sure that it does stay in balance. So we're gonna just come over and we're just going to wrap and wrap, okay, and go into the third one over. Okay, wrap and wrap, and go into the next one. And you see how I have one stitch left, so that means that my counts are proper. Okay, and now we wrap and wrap and we come to the first one that we missed on the other side. Now for tutorial reasons, I think that I've actually dropped a stitch along the way and it's not in this row that I've actually done it. I've actually done it in a previous row. So here's how I would cheat the system. <laughs> I know you're not allowed to cheat. I only have one left. But what I'm gonna do here is that I wanna bring it back in balance because if this happens to you, you're gonna be devastated and you're gonna frog. Just put two around the same post to bring it back in balance. Now the rules of cheating, you know, that is kind of cheating. It will look slightly off but sometimes you know you have to do what you have to do when it comes to crochet in order to keep it in balance with each other. So at the very end, just like we wanna do with this tie, we wanna make sure that there's two um, double crochets um, side by side, just coming straight down from each other on the other side. So I'm basically a bit off on this um, because I was jumping from the woven to this is that I think I may have dropped a few stitches. But now you can see I kind of faked it a bit and it does look slightly different but in the grand scheme of things that's how you would do it without frogging. So let's begin a turn of work. So even though I frog now I can be confident that I'm gonna keep the right counts going forward. So how to begin the next side. So you're always gonna do this so when we go to start. So one two, three, so we're looking at the back side of the project. We're going to double crochet into the first one that's available. Like so. Now this is what's odd and just bear with me and just go along with it. You are going to treble into the back post of this, of the first two. So you just want to wrap and wrap, bend it towards you and grab the yarn the post by just bending it so you can see it and just do it. Now you want to do two of those right in a row. And you think this just doesn't make sense, but it does. And just gotta bear with me. So you just gotta wrap and wrap coming into the next one. Okay, from the back. And you wouldn't have thought to do it, but it makes sense when you work up in other ways. So what we get from this point is that you would think that you're gonna go into the next two that are empty, but you're not. You're gonna skip all the way to the next section of where there's four here. And we're going to front post um, treble or back post treble into the next one that's available. Okay, so we still have two empties. We're going over to the third one. Okay, just like so. So now we have these two that have been skipped. Now this is where it gets really hard. You need to access those from the back but between everything. So you wrap and wrap and you need to feel around a bit but you just have to slip your hook in behind and grab that post in behind. So that it doesn't grab anything else and just do a treble as like you would. Okay, so it looks like it's all twisted up right now. Bear with it, it's gonna work out. You watch. Okay, so let's begin. You have two of those in a row so don't forget that we have two. And let's um, do that. So we wrap and wrap. Again, just coming in from behind, just grabbing the next one. Like so. And you're thinking this doesn't make any sense, Mikey. And I'm like, it does. So on the back, what's happening is that you'll have two lines coming up and you've just matched them to coming up to each other. Like so. So let's begin to do the next one. So we're gonna wrap and wrap. We're just immediately gonna skip over these ones that are turning this way and coming over to the third empty. Okay, and we're gonna 
So we're immediately just going to skip over the next two, come over to this side over here. And again from the back, so this side is really easy to get to, the ones that are facing already on the back. It's the other two that are really always hard. So we're just going to come into the second one that's available. So there's always two in a row, don't forget that. And now we need to come to this one here, but we need to come in through this gapping space through the other side. So we're going to wrap and wrap coming in and coming through the back and staying on the back for back post treble. It's all how you access that stitch. Wrap and wrap, we're coming into the next one that's available, coming in from the back and grabbing that one too. Okay, so that you now have four stitches left if you're coming to the end of the row and the next one is going to be um, back post treble, okay. And the next one is going to be back post treble. So you would not think to do that, but it actually works out because the that's the way the stitch works. And then the final is going to be two double crochets. So one into the, the second last one and one into the other. So all the work has actually happened on this side to create that woven effect. So let's begin to do this side next. So essentially now what's going to happen here is that you see that this is coming up, but now it's going to dive in behind in the next round. See how this one is coming up and then it just juts out? It's coming up, it's going to dive back in. So this is part of the, the whole wo uh, woven look. So we're going to chain up three to start and we're going to double crochet into the next. So this is how you will do every one of the, the rows going forward. Okay, so when we're on the front side, this is how it will work and when we turn it around the other side of what we just did is how it's going to operate and I'll review that one more time. So what we want to do is that we immediately want to jump to the, uh, skip over two and come to the third one over. You will see it's on the front side and we want to treble uh, on the front post. So we're keeping on the front side with this one. This is why this particular um, row is very easy. So you're just going to do your two in a row. And then we come back and we want to treble on the front post of these two that we skipped. And we start off with the furthest one away and do the next. Okay, so now we're ready to do the same stitching. So here we go. These two you want to skip and you want to immediately come over to here. Okay, so we're going to skip the first two and front post treble onto the next two. So you're thinking to yourself, that doesn't make any sense because you can see that it's going all this way. It's the one that crosses over that stops that from looking like that as it covers it. So we're going to wrap and wrap. We're going to go in the front post of the two that we have skipped. Okay, one into each like so and then we're ready again. So this one when we're doing this row we always immediately just go over to the very edge where the other one we put in uh, some trebles in before we got that far and uh, to keep it all balanced. I'm going to review the other side again so just in case you haven't picked it up by now and then we just come back and let's get the ones that we've missed over top. I love this stitch. I think it's fabulous and it's just a matter of getting used to manipulating the yarn so that you can see it and you can feel it in your hands. Once you have that done you only have two stitches left and those are going to be one double crochet each. When we come back I'm going to review the back one more time to make sure that you got it because the back is harder to understand than the front side and this is what it looks like. When so you're looking far. at the Celtic weave you're going to notice uh, something really interesting. You're going to notice that the sides here are going to appear like they're wrapping around. Those are like the Celtic knots and that's what's really amazing about this particular pattern. Let's turn our work and start another uh, row and we're again on the back side. You can start seeing that the back side is taking effect and this is exactly what we need to look for. So let's begin. We're going to chain up three, one, two, and three. We're going to double crochet into the first one. And now the next two that are in line here, each are going to get a front, are, are each going to get a back post um, treble. Okay, so coming from the back, it's the next two in a row. So we haven't skipped over anything yet. We don't skip anything over when we're going to start this particular row whenever we do this row. So now we're ready to skip over. 
So we're going to jump, we're gonna skip these next two that are lying this way and just immediately come over to these. And from the back side we get the first two with the front post treble. So the favorite part that you love is now the next part and that's the ones that you have skipped over here. Wrap and wrap and we come to the furthest one here, the closest one here to this part and we come in from the back. Using your fingers you can actually feel around for it. Just look for it. Um, this is one of those projects you don't want to have really tight tension and you want to do both of them. I was not this fast when I was doing it um, before. Um, I really had a hard time manipulating it in my hands and so once you get used to it, it gets really easy. So we're gonna immediately skip the next two that are available here. You can see that this here has already been taken up. So we immediately skip the next two and get the ones over in the next group of two. Just like so. And then we come back and get the ones that you love from the back side. Use that hook, feel around. Sometimes you might get it right on the first time. You may not. It's up to you. Um, once you get used to this pattern you will find that the hook will probably fall into place pretty easily and you won't have to think about it because I was thinking to myself when I first learned this I'm thinking it's going to take me forever to do an afghan like this but look at me now zooming. Okay so let's uh, go. So the, we have four stitches left so that means that the last two are just going to be in the back post. Okay just like so. So the next one is just a regular back post same as the next one. Look at the color of this yarn, it's fabulous. And then double crochet into the remaining two. So in this tutorial today I've taught you how to do the, the Celtic weave and you can see it looks absolutely amazing. I've taught you how to cheat the system just in case you need to and if you know how to cheat the system basically the world is your oyster. So this is Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Hopefully you've enjoyed your series today and good luck and hopefully that you can use these stitches in projects in the future. Until then, we'll see you.